engage, advocate, and lead your way to a better social media. Okay, this is about me. Of course, I'm the lover, a lover of arts, a book reader, and of course, a librarian. Uh, you all know that I'm assigned at the American Corner Cebu uh, in the downtown campus. So if you want to come and visit, you are all welcome when everything is okay. So the session will cover the following. First, I will be talking about communication and media. Second, traditional and the new media. Third would be media literacy. And fourth is tips for media balance and well-being. My presentation, may I just uh, remind you that this is not, it has something to do with attitude and behavior towards media. So not really very, a very technical presentation. Okay, so to start off, according to Oprah Winfrey, great communication begins with a connection. I think it holds true because from the beginning of time, as you can see on the illustration, since time immemorial, man has this need to communicate with others. Thus, um, it, um, thus um, the result is the first written word, and then it evolved uh, to the modern technology now that you know. So as a social animal, human beings need to connect with other person or community for that matter. So it is our nature to express ourselves and to share our thoughts to others. Now, I would just like to mention that um, the evolution of communication also evolved from traditional media towards the new media. So traditional media really are those media that you cannot interact, right? Not interactive. While the new media is a media wherein you can interact right away. So the thing that the traditional media is static while the new media is not. So that is the difference between the two. So most of us now are using a combination of traditional and the new media. Okay, I would like you to watch a short video clip uh, for, okay, for a moment, huh? just a moment, I need assistance here. I need to play something for you so that you can check. I don't know how to do it. Uh -uh -uh. Just a moment. Okay. No? Structures and beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No audio, miss. 
Wala, wala yung audio. Wala yung audio ko, no? Kuha na lang, Mer. I-sum up na lang ang ang buwan. I-sum up na lang kung wala yung wala yung wala yung continue na lang yung discussion mo. Hmm. Wala yun. Hmm. Continue na lang, Ms. Mayor. Okay, just to give you a... I will just summarize the video that I presented. So, it uh, it is being presented there that uh, media is everywhere. You will see it in your daily life. And then all you have to do is to be a media smart. So, what you need to do is to be media literate, to use media responsibly i think i need to share my screen again so i know you have been we are on a quarantine now we have been experiencing limitations when it comes to going out so your classes are all online. So I'm sure you've been doing all these things. You have been reading books, creating a vlog, listening to the radio, watching television, using your Facebook account, as well as your Instagram. So we do these things to be informed, to refresh ourselves, and to cut the boredom, of course. So media is everywhere and media we have been doing and using media most of the time so have you heard about uh, this term digital citizen okay who knows about it uh, for you teenagers you are considered the digital citizen. At this time, it is considered uh, someone who uses technology safely and responsibly. So a digital citizen is a person who knows how to use technology, but in a safe and responsible manner. In that way, if you are a digital citizen, you will be able to use media in the same way. So media as defined are all the ways that large groups of people get to share information or it is the tools that we use to get ourselves connected with other people to share information and other data. So going back, there is, an anat there is what we call the anatomy of a digital citizen. So as you can see, um, we need also to use our head, meaning you need to be knowledgeable or you have to make good judgment when it comes to 
uh, when using media, you need to have a good judgment when it comes to protecting your privacy, meaning protect not only yourself, but others as well. And of course, you have also to take note that we need to use our heart. In this way, we will be able to not only respect ourselves, but others as well. Since when you use media, now we usually uh, network with other communities. So it's not only your own culture that you are experiencing, but you are also talking to people uh, with different culture and race or identity for that matter. So you have to be sure, you have to make sure that you respect their own uniqueness. And of course, you stay safe online by listening to your gut feeling. Gut feeling would mean that while accessing the internet or using your Facebook or any social networking sites, you have this feeling that uh, it is not safe for you. You have this at the back of your mind that something is not right. So if you have that kind of feeling, you have to be sure to listen to it and take a pause. And then of course, since using the social media or any types of media for that matter will open up to some people who might take advantage of you, like they might harass you in some way or bully you, you have to make sure that you stand up and you have to take a stand and be what you are. So you have to stand for your own right and fight back but in a very not, not in a harmful manner in a sense so it would also you should make sure also to balance your time spending uh, using social media or using any kinds of media while doing worthwhile activities because remember media is not everything uh, to develop your own self, you have to do other things aside from using or accessing uh, media. So meaning to say, um, media usage is good, but it is also good to keep in touch personally with one another. But of course, not right now. Okay, so to become a responsible media user, you have this ring of responsibility. So the first ring or the inner ring represents yourself. Meaning to say, when you use media, first and foremost, you have to think of safety first. For yourself, then cascade it towards your family or your community or school and of course to the world. So it doesn't mean that you use media because you enjoy using the social media sites, but you have to make sure that you are safeguarding yourself and keeping yourself and other people from harm. So you have to make sure that you have this sense of responsibility when you use the media. Okay, media choices. So if you think that uh, if a person using media has this sense of responsibility in himself, you will be able to look at your choices or examine your choices for that matter and evaluate how much time you spend watching, listening, reading, even creating media. So you have to make sure that you keep your choices. You should choose the best and uh, in balance for your needs. So what makes a healthy media choice? So when you when you choose something or when you watch uh, something over the internet, you should examine yourself. So what should I watch today, for example? So you want to watch um, YouTube so from the YouTube channel you wanted to watch what a movie perhaps then 
you can take a note of that and you have to make sure uh you have to schedule it like you will watch it after class so not to disrupt your schedule in school or perhaps you have to also make sure that the span of time that you are watching is just average so as not to harm yourself so you will not also watch uh movies over the internet for uh for hours on end because it would not be healthy for you it would be detrimental so to create a media balance you have to use media in ways that would make you feel healthy and in balance with other life's activities meaning to say media is not everything so media is just there as a tool so you have to realize it because media is being made by men uh, in order for us to communicate but not to enslave ourselves but to keep ourselves more efficient more fast in commun communicating with other people So what is media literacy? There is still another video, but I'm not sure if it will work. Just a moment. Okay. Just a moment, I'll, I'll show it to you. Were you able to watch the video? Yes, no.
Miss, were they able to watch the video? No? Yes, Miss, we're able to watch the video, but the sound wasn't that good. Yes. I'm going to replay the video after the whole presentation so that you can review it. Just so, continue your presentation, Anna. Okay. So, wait a minute. So, if you have been trained or if you were taught to be skilled in media literacy or if somebody has taught you to know how to manage and manage and be literate in media you will be able to excuse me Ms. Mayor. yes Can you please Ms. Mayor, your presentation please share it to oh, the students okay. Miss, i think i'm sharing Hola? Hola. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, now me. Okay, going back. So if you're trained to become a media literate person, now you will be able to determine credible news. So news are presented in different manner. So there are news that's being presented such as fake news there it's still news but um it is presented in a very information presented is in a manner that's very unbelievable so website yes um, website is biased or is not part of a credible news agency academic or government organization or if not the author's by bio or previous articles shows bias on the issue being presented also key points cannot be corroborated or validated by other credible sites so when you are presented with a fake news so these characteristics will be more or less present so for questionable questionable information, um, information pres is presented in a surprising but not unbelievable manner. The website, of course, is still biased and is not part of credible news, academic or governmental organization. The author's bio or previous articles may show bias on the issue. Most key points cannot be validated by other credible sites. So you have to take note of those characteristics or features. While of course, credible news, you can identify them because information may or may not be surprising, but the information presented makes sense to you or to the individual who is reading. The website also is part of a credible news agency an academic or governmental organization. The author has no clear bias on the issue and the article is not an editorial or opinion piece. All key points can be corroborated or validated by other credible sites. So you, um, these sites might help you to check 
your facts. So these are fact checking sites uh, by, you can use via the internet. So um, HTTPS comma double slash uh, triple w snoops .com. This is a site that uh, you can use for whether the stories you're reading about are true on the internet. So you can also use MediaWell. This is a social science research site that has excellent articles on this information. So you can also check PolitiFact. Um, this is a site that would um, rate accuracy for uh, specifically for politics for elected officials. The fourth site is themediamatters.org. It monitors and corrects conservative misinformation in the media. So for you to be mindful, you have to think and you have to base your research or your information seeking and you can spot fake news by referring your sources or by considering your source of course that's the first and then second you have to check your author the third is you have to check the date when it was being posted you have to check the biases um, read beyond what's written on the headline support supporting sources and then try to think if um, the information is not a joke so if you are really uh, doubtful about everything that you've read what you can do is really ask the expert so ask a librarian your teacher or perhaps you can ask your parents or an adult or a person who specialize in that particular field so tips for media balance and well-being so this is something that summarizes the presentation so you can raise above media by recognizing that media is not all about you you have to remember that media is all about yourself and others so you can remember or you can refer to your ring of responsibility so you have a responsibility towards yourself towards community and to the world so after which you can apply the knowledge and skills you have learned in using media since it is a tool to improve yourself and to, to develop uh, the skill of a person for you to become better individual, to empower oneself. And of course, you can also involve your family or a responsible adult to mentor you. So for example, so that you can, so that you and your family will be able to um, understand each other for your need to use media you can always formulate a family media agreement so so that every member of the family will be able to understand your need to use the media in school in your daily life and for anything else so aside from involving your family you have to make sure that you are secured so you secure yourself while using any forms of media so you have to refer to our presentation. You have to refer to the anatomy of a digital citizen. So you have to think with your head. You have to think with the knowledge that you have gained. And you have to feel that this person needs respect because you are one in using the media within the digital community. And of course, you have to educate yourself or you have to educate yourself to be a responsible media literate individual so i hope uh, we can replay the videos for you so that you will be able to learn 
what it says. So we hope that this session, uh, you will be able to raise above your media use and become an empowered person in using the, the media tools. So I would like to show you a sample for uh, the family media agreement. So can you see my screen? Okay. So, yes. okay. So this is just a sample of, of a family media agreement would look like. Of course, if you want to involve your family about your media use, you can always copy this or revise if you wish to. For example, I will use myself as an example. So I will create a family media agreement. So I marry. Well, first, of course, you have to take care of any device you are using and uh, tell your family if something ha happened to it. Like, for instance, if it's broken, stolen, or lost. For example, the device you have is your cell phone. So since you are just minor or teenager, even if it is yours, basically your cell phones or your media device belongs to the family. So you have to make sure that you will inform or you will take care of the device given to you uh, by the family. So unless you have paid for the device with your own money or if it is a gift, um, the device really belongs to everyone in the family. So you also have to make sure that you're safe when you are using the device, since your smartphones now can access the internet, you will, you have to make sure that you will not create accounts or give out any private information, such as your name, your birthday, your address, phone number, or photos of yourself without your family's permission. Second, you also have to, be, to remind yourself that you should not share passwords with anyone other than a family member. You will ask your family to help you with the privacy settings if you set up devices, accounts, or profiles. Furthermore, you have to make sure that if somebody is pressuring you or someone, um, if you talk to someone who's making you feel uncomfortable or acts inappropriately towards you online, you'll have to stop communicating to the person and tell a family member or a trusted adult. And of course, you have to think first. Um, you will also try not to bully, humiliate, or upset anyone online uh, through sharing photos, videos, or screenshots, spreading rumors or gossips, or setting up fake profiles. And of course, you will stand up for those who are being bullied online. Uh, you also know that whatever you share online can spread faster and far. You will not post anything online that could harm your own reputation or that of your family. Whenever you use social media or any types of media or or if ever you have, um, if you if you will use someone else's work using the media, uh, please you have to be reminded that you have to give credit to the author or the artist. You must also know that not everything you read, hear, or see online is true. So you have to consider the source or the author if it's credible and of course you have to keep your balance so i will for a media user like you you will help your family set up time limits that make sense and then you will have to follow them through you should also be mindful of how much time you spend in front of screens and continue to enjoy other activities and people involved in your life so uh, don't limit yourself by watching 
or connecting your friends via social media sites or via the internet. So talk to them in person if it's possible. If using our media or being online is making you unhappy or it or if it's um, a hard habit to break, uh, you will have to talk to a member of your family or to a trusted individual. So there is also a need to communicate openly. You will talk to your family about media that you are using and what you do online and ask and answer their questions if possible openly and honestly. So you have to disclose the sites you are using to your family member. And of course, you will tell your family if you are, you are struggling with media use or if you have in some way committed mistake online or if you need help. So in exchange, um, the, your family will recognize that media is a big part of your life even if they don't always understand. Um, so you can use this, revise this if you want to, and you can sign it with your name and together with your guardian. So that is just a sample if you want to make a family media agreement. Then, okay, I think that would end my presentation. Thank you very much, Ms. Mary Guan Caro, for an interesting and very informative talk about the attitude and behavior towards media. The floor is now open for any questions. You may turn on your camera or unmute your microphone or use the chat box to um, ask your questions. Do you have any question or clarification from the speakers, book lovers, club members, and bloggers? Question? Are there any questions in the chat box, Ms. La? Or Sir Teniza? No question? I think Miss Mary can ask question. Oh, may I? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, why not? Okay. Just one, one question, question only. <laughs> uh, okay, should I choose one student to answer? Go ahead. Oh. Who's Miss Karyana? Miss Karyana? You can hear me? <laughs> I have a question. Who will volunteer? Nobody wants to ask any question. Or perhaps you don't understand the presentation. I see Miss Chris Lanaland because she's the MC. I will ask her. <laughs> <laughs> miss Chrysla, can you hear me yes miss <laughs> i i hope you don't mind but if i'm going to ask you is making a family media agreement okay with you so are you open to it do you do you want to create a media agreement between you and your family or the sites or the media for the sites that you're going to use? 
Uh, yes, Miss, because I think that it can really help us. Um, um, we were able to reflect on our attitudes and behavior towards media so that we can be a good uh, media citizen. Oh, well, thank you for that, Christina. <laughs> okay. No more questions? I think there's none. Uh, by the way, since you were not able to watch the videos properly during the presentation, I'm giving uh, Mrs. Ambos my presentation and you can watch it over during your club time. And if you have any more questions, you can tell Mrs. Ambos and you can tell her your questions and I'll be willing to answer them. I'll email Ms. Ambos for the answers of any of your questions. Okay? Okay, thank you, Miss Mary. Priscilla? One, yes, Miss. Once again, thank you so much, Miss Mary Caro. As, and as a token of appreciation, may I call upon the Book Lovers Club moderator, Mrs. Jesu E. Ambos, for the closing remark and certificate reading. Let us welcome her with a virtual round of applause. Okay, thank you, Miss Priscilla. And before I say uh, present the this e-certificate of appreciation to Miss Mary. I would like to thank everyone for joining us online. Uh, Mom Therese, the library committee chair, Mom Violi, our director of libraries, Mom Concon. You're there, Mom Concon? Yes, ma'am. I'm present. <laughs> okay. <OMG. laughs> okay. And to all the students, the officer of the Book Lovers Club, Okay, thank you very much. Iba ko na kuyaw kuyawan na ni sila. Okay, but thank you. <laughs> then, may I read on the certificate of appreciation to Miss Mary Gwen Corazon L. Caro in grateful appreciation for sharing her time and expertise as a resource speaker on the webinar Media Lab relating engaging, advocating, and leading your way to good social media. During the celebration of the Library and Information Services Month 2020, with the theme Library, libraries relate, engage, advocate, and lead. Given this 20th day of November 2020 via Google Classroom, signed Miss Mrs. Maxidurin Liva Cabaron, our Director of Libraries, and Miss Janet Fernandez, our Principal. Uh, Nabas Miss Janet diha? Are you there, Miss Janet? Oh, she promised magod nga would join. Baka ano, uh, busy lang si Miss Janet. Miss Kaing, thank you very much for joining us. I know it's already time. Yes, thank you for <laughs> the invite too, Miss. Thank you, Miss Miss Kaing, and also the Vloggers Club. I hope na uh, na ano nila na so ni. Uh, na may use ni nila ang information nga uh, among share this afternoon. And thank you, Miss Mary, for your. <laughs> Actually, si Miss Mary is in my side. <laughs> Hello. Okay. okay, back to you, Chrisla. Thank you so much, Miss Jessie Ambos, and of course to our speaker, Miss Mary Gwen Caro. And at this point, may I invite Nicole Charis Uy to lead the closing prayer. Let us put ourselves in the most holy presence of God, for God sees us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 As we come As we to an end of this event, we thank you, God, for making this event a success. May everything we do begin with your inspiration and continue with your help. May your love and grace continue to guide us in everything that we do today and in the future. Amen. May the darkness of sin and the night of unbelief vanish before the light of the word and the spirit of grace. And may the heart of Jesus live in the heart of all people. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Keep safe.